Hello everyone, welcome back to PTEP Chemistry channel. So my name is Mr. On, and in this tutorial video, I'll go through this uh, titration experiment. So this is a burette. It's got this uh, a tab at the bottom that you can turn on and off. And this is where the solution will come up from. It's got graduated lines. I'm not sure if it's clear or not. It's got graduated lines running from 50 to 0 on the very top. And you have an inlet at the top that you can uh, fill the solution with. Uh, typically, we'll, we'll have to, uh, depending on whether you get it dry or you get it a bit uh, wet in this case, so you always have to wash with a bit of distilled water. So I should do this at the sink, but because I have it tapped closed, so I can just rinse it with distilled water. So it's very important not to do this with tap water distilled water because distilled water has no dissolved ions so you can see nothing is flowing out but I've got a liquid inside okay so I will roll it so that it's washing the side of the burette with distilled water so I'm going to pour this down the sink but don't forget that you also get a bit of uh, stuff which you did not wash the bottom with so I'm just washing with distilled water first because we wanted to make sure that uh, there's no other uh, uh, previously unused uh, reactant that was in there that might affect your titration result. So, so do make sure so do make sure that you run the, the tab open so that the distilled water actually runs through the bottom before we start your titration. So we want to make sure the tear is open at the end so that whatever uh, liquid that was trapped inside, whatever distilled water that was trapped inside will have been washed away. Uh, we also want to make sure that it's as dry as possible. Uh, at least it was washed with distilled water already. If you got a lot of distilled water in there, that can affect your concentration. All right. So make sure the tear is closed so that when you fill it in, it wouldn't, it wouldn't spill out. Okay, so you hold it. So I have my burette held on a red top stand here. Uh, this is a pipette filler. It's like a pump. It's got a symbol A there to represent when you when you press on it, and then you 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 compress the thing there. Okay. So that is for um, for filling it with air, and then this is for this is S, which stands for uh, sucking. So as you put this thing into the pipette, so this is a pipette, P I P E double -T, T E. This says here is a twenty five mil pipette or twenty five cnq pipette. As you can see, there is a line there. So that is the line where it fills up all the way to 25.0 mil. Uh, uh, yeah, pipette is used to draw out a fixed volume of uh, a solution or a liquid. So it's not as versatile as burette, but it's almost as accurate as a burette in uh, withdrawing a fixed amount of a liquid, all right? So it's got that inlet on the top that we're gonna put this in all right so this is glassware this is plastic you want to be careful that you're not breaking the glass these are very expensive uh, piece of glassware uh, but before we use it you can see there's a bit of uh, white stuff inside it's best if we wash it with a bit of distilled water distilled water has that inlet well has that outlet that you can just push into the hole here all right i'm going to do this at the sink so that i don't spill water everywhere So we want to wash the side. We want to wash the side of the, the pipette bulb. So we have to tip it a little bit there, we roll it, and then we let out as much of the distilled water as possible. And wipe the outside dry. Okay, and then just leave it standing there before it's ready for use. Okay, so it's. Um, 
So this is a particular practical on the October, November 2016. This is for paper 3-2. Uh, and this is specifically on a titration question, which you can find out the paper. But it's basically between an acidified manganese 7 and an iron 2. So acidified manganese 7. So it's an acidified KMnO4 and an iron 2 which has been dissolved in acid. The iron 2 is very faint, very faint, very pale green kind of thing. It's dissolved in sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid helps to prevent the, the oxidation of iron 2 to iron 3 in the presence of oxygen. So uh, in a real exam, uh, iron 2 solution is always prepared like uh, quite fresh, like a day or two before the actual exam, because uh, if you leave them for a long time, they do actually get oxidized to iron 3 uh, in the solution, okay? But the sulfuric acid helps to slow down that reaction a lot. This is acidified KMnO4. You obviously can't see the acid because the acid is colorless, but KMnO4 consisting of the transition metal manganese in the plus 7 oxidation state. That's why it's called manganese uh, 7. VII refers to 7, uh, 5 plus 2 for the Roman numeral. So it's very dark purple in color. You will have used these uh, a lot of times. You have seen it a lot of times as well. The problem with such a dark color solution is when you fill in the burette with... Actually, you should probably read the question. Um, Q is Q is the purple color potassium manganese 7. So we need to put Q in the burette. So the KMnO4 actually goes in the burette. Making sure that the tab is closed. You see that I still have a bit of water at the bottom there. So I really must let, I really should, uh, should have let it dry just now by leaving the tab open. It's only before I fill in with the solution that I want to fill in that I will close the tab to prevent it from leaking, right? Again, um, in reality, to, because of the because of the circular um, uh, nature of this, when you pour it in, there's a risk of you spilling it over. So you should really use a funnel, a small funnel, uh, in order to transfer the liquid here into the burette. Okay, um, I'll do this at the sink because I'm worried about spilling it. So very, very dark purple. The tab is closed. It doesn't spill at the bottom. But remember that you see here is the purple bit. So when you record the volume, it's not that accurate because this has not been filled with the purple solution. So before I start my experiment, in fact now, even when I fill in just a little bit, I really must open the tab into the sink so that it can get rid of whatever water is left in here. So that's what I'm going to do here. Pull it down the sink. And as you can see now, the bottom bit is filled with the solution that we want to fill it in and then we'll get rid of the last bit of water that was remaining there. The tap is still closed, so it doesn't drip. This will be drop by drop, as it's from a burette and it's pretty accurate. It is very, very difficult to read the reading below the meniscus for anything that involves a dark solution like this. So whenever we're doing a titration experiment involving KMnO4, we always read from above the meniscus. Okay, and this, well, this is how I always read it. There's almost no way for you to read below the meniscus because of how dark the solution is. Uh, unless you've got uh, superficial uh, sight or superficial power of your eyes, uh, we always read above the meniscus only for dark solution like this. Because we read above the meniscus for the starting volume, we also read the above the meniscus for the uh, final volume at the end point. So, um, Usually, uh, school will tell you that to fill up to zero, uh, but then because it's so hard to read exactly zero for, for KMnO4, so you can fill up anywhere, uh, as long as it's filled out reasonably to the top and you can read the reading, that should be alright. This is titration, as long as you know the starting volume, you'll be alright uh, when you have an endpoint, you can just subtract it from the starting volume, and that's why you must record what was the initial volume, what was the starting volume you use, alright? And 
time back. So I was was running around looking for conical flask, and it turned out that the conical flask was just behind me in the in the cabinet there. Um, let's see. Okay, I can live with this. Can live with this as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a conical flask. As you can see, there might be a little bit of stain on the side. So it's best if you wash it with distilled water, not tap water. Again. I'd like to ask you why you shouldn't use tap water in any of your washing uh, apart from the final washing of course the final washing you can just rinse with tap water so swirl it around the side to get rid of whatever that could dissolve in distilled water uh, don't forget that distilled water can affect concentration however one of the most important things they like to ask is does it matter does it matter if you wash it with distilled water and you got a little bit of water remaining in here will it affect the end point. When you think about it, if you have a little bit of water in here, yes, it will affect the concentration of the resulting solution that you prepared in, but whatever you prepared in is a fixed volume of a fixed concentration. So if you take in 25 cm cube of a particular uh, concentration, uh, when you put it in, the mold is going to be the same whether you whether you put it into a dry conical flask or whether you put it into a, a slightly washed conical flask with a little bit of distilled water the mold of the solution prepared in will be the same because you prepared in the fixed volume and you prepared in the, the, the one with a non-concentration so the mold of what you prepared in is the same it might just become less concentrated but since the mold of the stuff that you prepared in is the same that means the end point will not change however if you have a little bit of water in the burette just now, that water will affect the concentration of the thing in the burette. And if you make the thing in the burette less concentrated with a little bit of distilled water left around, then what happens is, if this is less concentrated, you will need just a bit more in order to reach the end point because it's less concentrated. So you need just a bit more of the volume and therefore your end point will be higher than what it should be. But if you have a little bit of water in your conical flask, whatever you prepare in is the same mold quantity, uh, irrespective of whether you use a dry conical flask or a little bit of wet conical flask with distilled water, it will not affect your end point because the mold of the stuff that you prepare out is the same and you're just titrating against um, the, 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 the thing in the burette, okay? So sometimes they do ask you, is it important? Should you wash this with distilled water or should you wash it with the solution R? If you wash it with solution R, then you will be left with a little bit of solution R. That means if you have a little bit of this, which is solution R, when I prepare in the right amount of R, which is the iron 2, then I will have just a bit more of the iron 2. When I have just a bit more of the iron 2, then my end point will be slightly higher. So that's why the conical flask, the thing that you prepared out, that conical flask, you must not, you must not wash it with the solution because you will increase the mold of that substance that you prepared out. Right? The thing with burette is after you wash with distilled water, you must wash it with the solution that you fill in because if you have got a bit of water in there, it will affect the concentration of your burette solution, therefore it will affect your end point. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. These are one of the things I like to ask in error analysis. Um, uh, in probably the new modern type of uh, O-level practical paper uh, because these are the more common type of things they like to ask in an A-level setting and they are trying to move towards that kind of thing for O-level now to make the, the students more aware of these experimental skills, right? So I've talked a lot on, on these kind of little things uh, because this video is not just targeted for for all level students, uh, is actually targeted for anyone doing uh, experimental planning, design, uh, analysis, and evaluation as well. So titration is a very common experiment. Uh, well, that all students will have done. This one specifically is a redox titration because it's between an oxidizing agent, acidified KMnO4 is manganese uh, plus seven, very strong oxidizing agent. Iron 2 plus can get oxidized to iron 3 by the oxidizing agent 
and the oxidizing agent oxidizes the iron 2 plus iron 3 plus its serve get reduced from mn plus 7 to mn plus 2 which will be uh, a little very very pale pink and um, uh, kind of colorless at the end point all right so um, I have a little bit of water in there but like I said it will not affect the end point because I'm going to pipette out the right amount of the iron 2 so this is the pipette this is the pipette filler I press A and I, this is compressed okay so put the thing gently into the hole and I don't know you be careful about poking it in by force because this is sharp glass if you pock it in and then um, the sharp if you have uh, glass shards inside which are really sharp they can pierce through the plaster and they can really hurt your hand all right so try to do it gently and try to twist it twist it in by twisting it in because it's rubber you are making it a nice snug fit all right so this is still compressed this E stands for eject oops sorry E stands for eject S stands for suck so I'm going to suck it straight from the uh, reagent bottle but when you suck it in do not ever eject it into here again because you do not want to whatever that goes into the pipari you do not want to put it back into your reagent bottle but what you can do is you can suck out and then you can just chuck it into the another flask or you can just chuck it into uh, the sink all right typically speaking we don't throw away solution into the sink um, so as you could see the thing is slowly filling up so I keep on pressing S I hold S and that is not great because they have just been filled with air bubble and this one is no longer compressed so what I do then is I will just press A and this is not great as well because you could see <laughs> I clearly have not done titration for a long time and you can see that there is a, there's an air bubble there so there's a solution there but there's air bubble from there all the way to there so what I'll do is I'll eject this a little bit so now now I don't have well this is all filled now a little bit of air bubbles here and there but at least that's better than the one just now so typically when we want to take the pedal solution we'll hold it at an angle okay we'll hold it at an angle and then we will suck it up so we always like to suck up higher than the line itself because when we suck up higher than the 25 required we can we can then so this is higher than the line required all right so it's about there but the line is around here then I'll take it out no air bubble inside then I'll eject it on the eye level until I reach whatever volume I need eject slowly and this one is colorless solution so you can read at eye level so I hope you can see it's not very clear but uh, just below the meniscus just below the meniscus meniscus is like that slightly curved so okay my solution is getting worse and worse uh, anyway my first one is going to be a rough titration so this is probably as good as it gets maybe I'll take in some more okay so suck a bit more and then you check so that's 25.0 the first one is always a rough titration so if you press E it will come down okay if you don't press E it will not come down if I press E it will come down because E stands for eject that will be slow so what you can do is you can slowly twist you can slowly twist open but hold the bulb with your hand with your other hand release twist it not pull it okay twist and pull and then this thing will come down much faster but there will always be a little bit of solution left in the, at the end of the pipette okay so what you do is gently tap one two three four five and that last drop the very very last drop left in the pipette is something that you might not really get completely out of 
Okay, that's because it's already taken into account the accuracy. Uh, it does the error uh, analysis of the pipette. It has a percentage error. That's already taken into account in there. So do not do not force your way <laughs> by by tapping glass and glass uh, very hard. Just do it very gently. So this is twenty five cm cube of this iron tube. All right, and sometimes they like to ask you as well in relation to what I said earlier. So this comes as a bottle, so you can say a student forget to close the lid. If a student forget to close the lid of iron 2, leave it open overnight and tomorrow you come back, your titration result could be slightly different because the iron 2 could have been oxidized to iron 3, alright? And you could test it with qualitative analysis because you have done tests for Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus in, um, in qualitative analysis. So if you have lesser Fe2 plus and more Fe3 plus, that means you will have lower endpoint because you just need lesser of the uh, KMNO4 to oxidize the remaining Fe2 plus, all right, in the same 25 cm cube. So you don't need an indicator for this reaction. So this is unlike the acid base titration where you usually need an indicator because this color itself is self-indicating. Purple, it will turn to uh, pale pink or colorless, most likely colorless. So usually they'll give you a white towel. So I find myself a white towel. So not really white, but you know it will do. Um, okay. So I am, I am right. I am right-handed. So I'll hold the conical flask on my right, and I will twist. Sorry. I will twist this to the other side so that my left hand side control my left hand control the valve. Okay. So remember that you can twist these things around here, yeah? okay? So this is a rough titration. So I have 25 cm cube. I have 25 cm cube of the iron 2. I don't really want to I don't really want to be super exact for my um, accurate titration for my rough titration. So I could just do this uh, just to find out how much roughly do I need, all right? Um, so before that, I should really read the volume first. Oops. So eye level, I've read above the meniscus because this is a dark solution. So this is 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. But 2.7 be wrong because, um, so there's 2.70, 2.70 initial reading. 2.70 initial reading. So we'll just let it flow. We'll just let it flow. So how we can see the color change. Uh, I can't move it any lower. Uh, can you see the color change? I think you, you can't really see the color change, can you? Um, okay, you can see the color change, all right? So as you can see, it remained kind of colorless, okay? Because there's still a lot of iron 2 in here and the MnO4 minus gets converted to Mn2+, plus, but you still have a lot of iron 2 in here. When all the iron 2 has gone to iron 3, when I have excess of this, then it will not go to Mn2+, plus because it will, there will not be any Fe2+, plus to be oxidized to Fe3+, plus. so the KMnO4 will remain KMnO4, and therefore I will get a lot of intense purple color when I have excess of this, alright? I'm doing a rough titration. The first titration must be a rough titration. So I don't really care too much about accuracy for the first one, all right? So I'm just letting it free flow, okay? I just want to know roughly where it is, all right? So just now we started from 2.70. So I stopped swirling for a bit, as you can see, it's still colorless. There's no dark purple color yet. So it's still colorless. We are not too concerned about accuracy at this point. We just want to know roughly, roughly when to stop. As you can see, there's still no excess KMnO4. So it still go clear. So there's no excess KMnO4. And as you can see, this has already stayed purple. It doesn't go to clear anymore. That is because all the iron 2 has gone to iron 3. So I'm left with just KMnO4 that is left unreacted because there's no more Fe2 plus to be oxidized by the SD5 KMnO4. So it just remained purple. So this is excess. This is rough titration. 
you have to do a rough titration in order to know roughly when to stop okay so on my burette reading again I will read above the meniscus so that is 26.9 so 26.90 minus uh, 2.70 26.90 minus 2.70 that will be your volume or rough tighter if you know the rough tighter then later on you will know where you started with and then you will slow down as you reach to the volume of this uh, rough tighter because you know that is close to your end point you do not want your end point to be this this is excess cam and off already you want your end point to be from the from this color one drop of this give you a very slight pink so you know this is a very intense color so one extra drop give you a very slight pink this is quite intense pink already because I have quite a lot of it right so what happens if I keep on adding right so that was 26.9 minus 2.7 okay I should go and grab a pen but um, I'll grab it in a little bit 26.9 minus 2.7 so this is my good old calculator. Um, my fellow subscribers and viewers will have known that I've used this calculator since I was in secondary one. That was around 20 years ago, 20, 21 years ago. It has got cracks all over the place. <laughs> have a look, it's got cracks all over the place. This is FX992. I really like this calculator. All the, all the markings have faded but I know the calculator inside out since I've used it for 20 years and uh, my point is do you know your calculator or not all right so 26.90 I better show it's 26.90 minus 2.70 you record burette reading to two decimal place all right so that is 24.20 your calculator show you 24.2 but you should know about accuracy of burette is to two decimal place and uh, you record it to plus minus 0 0.05 so this is 24.20 cm cube that is your rough title so give or take i did not add too much in excess i would take away maybe 3 cm cube 3.00 cm cube so 21.20 cm cube okay if you start from zero, then you will slow down around 21.2, 21.20. But I'm not going to start from zero because it's very difficult to read above the meniscus if I start from zero. So depending on where I start with, if I start from five, let's say if I start from five, I will add five plus 21.2. Then once I reach 26 or 26.2, I will slow down. Then I'll do drop by drop because I know I'm close to my end point. That is the whole point of doing a rough titration so that you know roughly when to stop, all right? Roughly when to stop. So 21.2, right? So now I just want to show you what happened if I have added a huge excess. So this was slightly, this was slightly pink already. If I add a lot more, I hope you can see the color gets more and more intense. The color gets more and more and more intense because now you have a huge excess of the Cayman of all. So you can throw this away and clean up. Remember when you clean it up, you have to use distilled water to clean it up and not the solution itself because you do not want extra more. Oops, you do not want extra more of the iron 2 plus in the solution. You want the distilled water because distilled water will only affect concentration but since you are pipetting out a fixed volume of the iron 2 the mole is the same and therefore it does not matter I'll take this over onto a piece of tissue paper if you have which you should be given so that it could dry but again it does not matter if you have a little bit of distilled water inside because remember we were talking about we were talking about a little bit of water in there will not affect the mole of whatever you prepared into here uh, with the right volume. So this was the other clinical flask that I washed out. I'll try and do the accurate titration now. So strictly speaking, you need at least um, two or three uh, accurate titration that are within plus or minus uh, 0.10 cm cube. Okay, so. Okay. 
So hold it at an angle a little bit so that it goes, it helps. I actually don't know why it helps, but it helps. Get it above the line and do not, do not put back the solution into the thing. Throw it away into the sink. Do not throw it into the conical flask because you want an exact mold of 25. So this is right on the line there. Once I press E into the conical flask which was clean with distilled water, not the solution, right? Distilled water. Because if you have a little bit of the solution in here, then it will increase the mole of the Fe2 plus in the conical flask, then it will you will require a bit more of the uh, a bit more of the caramel for for titration. So take out your of course, that thing already called a uh, pipette filler, and you want to tip the glassware very gently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not being superstitious, but some people really are a bit pedantic to tap it up to ten. Some people tap a couple of times, it's alright. Like I said, the pipette accuracy already take into account the last bit of drop that's left in the pipette. So now this is around 30 and I know my end point is roughly, sorry, my rough title minus around 3 cm cube just now was 21.2. 30 is not a good value to start because I might run out by the time I reach to 50. So I want to fill this in again with KMNO4 and ideally you'll be using a funnel but I think I'm experienced enough not to spill it but if you are careless then you can spill it alright. So I'm not filling it up to zero because it's hard to read above the meniscus for such a dark colored solution. Remember that the bottom is already filled from just now, from the first pass of the volume. Um, let it settle for a little bit and then I'll read it. So this is reading above the meniscus, this is 11.50. This is 11. Point. I do have a pen, okay? So this is 11. 0 0.50 so this is my starting volume this is my initial reading of 15.5 I'm writing on my hand because I don't want to I don't want to spill this um, I don't want to spoil this uh, actual question paper the actual question paper will have titration number one two and then you can create three and four you have your initial reading sorry final reading on top and then the unit as usual you have to write the unit initial reading and then the unit and then the volume of the Q which means this one is from what was Q? Q is from the burette so Q is going to be the final reading minus the initial reading the best titration result has to be within plus or minus 0 0.10 cm cube right so just now we did a rough title we started from 2.7 I think and then 24.9 so that gives us around 24.20 actually yeah around 24.20 cm cube so 24.20 cm cube is the rough title which was in slide access so 24.20 plus 11.50 my current starting one gave me 35.70 your calculator does not show you that but it's actually 35.70 so excess will be 35.70 and then I take away roughly 3 cm cube so I should stop at around 32.70 so we're going to start with this so I will not slow down until I reach around 32.70 which is around there so I can just let it flow it does not matter because we know that it, it will not overshoot it because it's roughly a few cmq before the excess one and I wasn't su being super accurate for the excess one and I've already taken away around 2 to 3 cmq from the from, from what I would expect if it is an excess right so it looks like it looks like it's I'm sure it's not very clear so I haven't swirled this at all it looks like it's palping but as you can see as I swirl it I haven't reached excess yet okay so this is the this is the 
moment when I should do it drop by drop and then one single drop would mean so adjust your burette so that it goes drop by drop okay so your your hand on the burette um, valve and then one hand continuously swelling it and your eye is not on the burette reading because there's no point of reading from the burette right now we have already taken into account how much would it be if it is in excess so we will have to we will have to just monitor what happened to the reaction uh, as it goes drop by drop what happened at the end I might have been a little bit conservative uh, in stopping too early so this might take a while uh, if you want you can probably fast forward this video uh, but I don't want to risk I don't want to risk having to redo my accurate titration again uh, so I know roughly well we know that it will stop at some point so when I swirl it against the white town I could not see the pale pink color okay if I cannot see the faint pink or purple color that means I need to keep on going All right so your eyes must be on the solution um, I'll stop talking and just concentrate on this I guess so sometimes it's better to just um, do the rough titration because some people like to be accurate from the very beginning and if you don't know roughly where to stop then you're just wasting a lot of time uh, looking for the accurate title but once you know where the rough title is then it's easy for you to roughly work out when you should stop for the accurate title oh gosh this is taking a while so my hands are getting sore now uh, I think I have just overshoot by one drop okay so as you can see the previous drop was just fine but this is just a little bit pale pink now okay how we can see it's just a little bit so just now it was more like this kind of color a little bit pale green colorless and if you could uh, rewind the video by like a couple of seconds just before that just before that one drop it was still colorless well kind of pale green but now it's kind of gone to this a uh, little bit pinkish all right so that is my end point and i was being super accurate doing drop by drop so i might have overshot by one drop which is why i need to do another accurate titration to make sure that was that within plus minus 0 0.10 cm cube so reading from above the meniscus that gave me 34.90 34.90 okay so i'm holding with my hand so this is not going to be super accurate but how you can see there's 34 there's 35 so 33 34 35 you read downward so 34 34.90 because burette reading is to two decimal place plus or minus 0 0.05 so there's 39, oops, sorry, 34.90. Again, <laughs> I don't want to spoil my paper, so I'm just writing on this, but you know. So two decimal place, 11.50 was what I started with. Final volume, 20, sorry, 34.90. So your volume of QUs from the burette will be 34.90 minus 11.50. That is 23.40, 23.40. Just now our rough title uh, was around 24.1, so it makes sense that your exact title is lesser than that. So what you do now really is repeat the experiment a second time for the accurate title. Uh, you want to uh, repeat it to get the accurate title again and make sure that you are within plus minus 0 0.10 of this. So this was 23.40 for the accurate title. This is not the accurate title because I did not start from zero. So 20, 23.40 uh, plus minus 0 0.1 would mean between 23.30 to 23.50, that should have been acceptable uh, for a second or third accurate titration that you would then put a tick on them and average the results to get the average best title. All right, um, I'll do the 
repeat titration a little bit. I need a bit of a rest because um, I've been talking too much. All right, see you in a little bit. And I am back. So I'm gonna chuck this away. I might or might not need this later on, but I'll just wash it with distilled water because depending on how our second accurate titration goes, we might need to do a third one um, just in case. So when you wash conical flask, make sure you swirl on the side because you never know what is left on the side. I said earlier, if you're left with a little bit of distilled water inside, it will not affect your endpoint because whatever you prepare into here is a fixed volume of non-concentration from the iron 2 plus and therefore your mole is the same and if your mole fe 2 plus is the same it will not affect your end at all so fill in the burette so we roughly know the end point is around 20, 23.4 roughly so i don't need to fill out all the way to zero now because i roughly know what my accurate endpoint is now. Mm. Again you do not necessarily have to fill it in to the to the whole number because you'll just be wasting your time if you fill it into the nearest whole number when you know that you could have like a random reading I remember 11.50 or 11.55 or whatever. Here my initial reading is going to be 20 20.10 20.10 okay so I remember I, I did a rough but I did not include it here 23.40 is the accurate title this is why I started with 20.10 right now so this plus this should be my accurate title so 20.10 plus my accurate title 23.40 I know that was super accurate already super accurate drop by drop so I will just take away I will just take away one cm cube I take away one cm cube so I know it's 42.5 so I roughly need to slow down around 42.50 cm cube because it depends on what I started with 42.5 is around here so I'll just let it flow until it's around there oops not that I haven't prepared out anything yet, okay, so I need to prepare out my solution. So the pressure itself is not that tricky. Uh, it will take you less of time if you don't have to talk and show someone how to do it. The calculation is probably the one that will take a bit more time, uh, but once you once you have done once you have done the practical correctly, then you should probably know how to do the calculations because those are all straight from your theory. So practical and theory uh, married together uh, give you chemistry because you do not get uh, theory in chemistry without the practical itself. So tap, 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 tap. There might be a little bit left, but you know, you're never going to get the very last bit out. That's okay. Don't tap too hard. You do not want to break the last way. Uh, not in school, not in the real thing. So there's there just now 20. See, when you leave it for some time, the actually goes up again because there was some that actually flows down, right? So now it reached 20.00. So just now I wrote down 20.1. But now, you should always read before you start, 20.00. Because you get some of the things that actually drip down, right? So that could affect the result to some extent. 20.00 plus 23.40 is 43.40. So 43.40, if you take away 1 CMQ, is around 42. 42.40. So I'll stop around 42.40. So there's around there. I do not want to overshoot, so 42.40. So I do not need to worry about doing it drop by drop at the beginning because you know it's never going to change because we know we know the endpoint roughly already, right? And we know the exact endpoint from our first exact titration. 
and now I'm just doing a second insect titration just to confirm was I wrong or would I get within plus or minus 0.10 okay so that's the whole point of doing a second titration okay so I hope you can see that it is still it is still clear it is still this pale green color it is not the pink color all right so we'll do it drop by drop from now drop by drop hands on the valve another hand on the conical flask swirling okay now you have to swirl continuously and you have to do it drop by drop and your eye level is on the conical flask never on the burette on the conical flask so open the valve slowly drop 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 so it hasn't turned hasn't turned one drop and it will turn not yet not yet and we have reached the end point okay so i've swaps i stopped swirling and i hope you can see the color now the color is kind of slight pale pink so it is no longer i better move the camera a little bit up okay so the color is now a little bit pale pink and no longer this color all right so that was doing drop by drop at the very end if i read my volume Okay, I should leave it up so that I'm reading at eye level. Uh, read above the meniscus, just that like I've read above the meniscus for the initial and other reading, uh, only because it's a dark color solution. Uh, this is 43, 43 1, 2, and 3. 43.30. 43.30 and I get 23.30 as a result so 43.30 minus that I get 23.30 that is just slightly lesser than that but these two are within they are within or meaning the difference between them is plus minus 0 0.10 cm cube so that is what we call concordant titers concordant titers titers they are consistent within plus minus 0 0.10 cnq of each other in all levels specifically uh, concordant titers could have been relaxed to like plus minus 0 0.20 but if you are doing a level chemistry your concordant titer must be accurate to plus minus 0 0.10 cnq so you need to be aware of um, your what level of standards are required for all level versus a levels uh, but it's always um, uh, base if you can maintain your concordant titers to be within plus minus 0 0.10 so that's it i've just done two exact titrations uh, and that is enough because i did i did one rough in order to know roughly where i where i need to stop and therefore I, I already know where i need to stop so i took away like three or four cm cube uh, depending on what initial volume i started with which is not necessarily always 0 0.00 or the whole number uh, then i'll be careful I don't need to add drop by drop until near to the end point for the first accurate title. For the first accurate title, I already know exactly where to stop. Therefore, for the second accurate title, I do not need to go minus 5 cmq. I can just do minus 1 cmq from the expected end point so that um, I don't have to waste too much time. Again, drop by drop towards the end and you can get the end point pretty accurately. Consistent concordant titers within plus minus 0 0.10 cm cube uh, for A levels, which is almost always the best case for all levels as well. But all level is a little bit lenient. All level IGCSE is a bit more lenient. You can get away with maybe up to plus minus 0 0.20 depending on your syllabus, right? So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, share, uh, and share the channel uh, with friends, uh, families, relatives, students, juniors, seniors, and other people and follow me at ptt.chemistry that is ptt.chemistry on facebook instagram um, twitter and other social media platforms thank you for watching i hope that was useful 
So I forgot to add, when you are doing cleaning up, make sure that, you know, you don't do what I do and you accidentally spill some solution over your question paper. You only get one question paper and therefore uh, you need to be careful and not to, you know, make that question paper dirty or stand with solution that it becomes impossible for you, for, for us to send that uh, abroad to Cambridge for your marking. Alright, so just be careful during your cleaning up and um, see you again in the next video.